we all understand the type of climate that we're dealing with. We're dealing with multiple offer situations. You know, I'd love to know sort of what's your why? What what, what makes you tick? Why are you so successful? Uh, in and your- have a dialogue with your lawyer. Have a dialogue with your agent. Both sort of passionate about sort of what we do. Again, vet your agent to make sure that they're experienced have- and they're local. I like that idea. No excuse to miss it on no Saturdays excuse. from 8 to 9. <laughs> That's right. WBZ. And now the show that gives you the latest and most relevant housing market news. Real Estate Radio Boston with financial expert Rick Shearer and legal professional Ali Alavi. Uh, so you're in 100 countries right now. Um, obviously, you see trends. Uh, globally, you see trends. Um, are there any particular countries that you're pursuing now that you don't have a presence currently? No, we've... We've still got about 20 countries that we would look at, but there are certain countries that uh, we won't even touch right now, such as Russia. The corruption is so awful there that uh, I won't even let my teams uh, travel there. Right. Got it. Dave, you've experienced uh, a, a number of different recessions, obviously, uh, and uh, four or five, right? Yeah, this is number five. All right. Um, so, uh, so I can ask you to take a look at your crystal ball. And tell us, what do you predict for the housing over the course of the next two years, three years? Uh, We're still recovering from what we went through. Uh, It's a slow and gradual recovery, which, by the way, is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, There is so many factors that are pent up that is going to show long term the next five or ten years, other than the uh, normal ebb and flow of recessions and boom times, that the long term real estate is... Uh, very sought after uh, commodity. We have uh, all these Y gens that graduated, uh, came out and didn't have good jobs that are living with their parents. They are starting to loosen up. Family formation, as in all recessions, absolutely collapsed, and it's almost back to pre recession levels. So, family formations, first they usually rent a property, but that pushes other renters out to buy. You have legal immigration of 1.1 million a year and they buy very early when they come to the U.S. The illegal immigration problem, whether you're liberal or uh, conservative, Republican or Democrat, is going to be solved. Uh, There's no question. Uh, The National Association of Home Builders and the National Association of Realtors did a study about a year ago and said once the legal immigration is implemented and people have a path to citizenship, that that would stimulate the real estate industry to the tune of $550 billion that's with a B, a big over number. a 10-year time period. Um, how do you predict what's going on in China? I mean, obviously right now we're seeing China, the, the Chinese uh, real estate market is absolutely nuts. <laughs> and uh, do, you, do you consider that a bubble, and is there going to be a correction, and how is that going to impact our housing here in the U.S.? Yes, their market's corrected probably three times in the last 10 years. Uh, been pretty wild swings. The Chinese government is actually encouraging they're wealthy individuals, let's say the 300 million that are middle class or more, Mm -hmm. to invest in real estate around the world. Uh, They feel that that takes the pressure off of people who are buying and speculating in their own country and kind of releases that bubble slowly instead of exploding it. There's many people who want to get some assets out of their own country. Sure. Uh, Examples would be Brazil and Argentina, which are pretty unstable, now growing economies and they're good, but uh, a lot of wealthy people are saying, I want assets someplace else. For those who don't know about Radon, tell us a little bit about what Radon is and and, uh, why they should be aware of it. Absolutely. Um, You know, Radon, just to break it down very simply, is a radioactive gas. It's naturally occurring. Mm-hmm. It um, it when uranium, which is in bedrock and ledge, breaks down naturally, it emits radon gas. Which, if you inhale it in concentrated amounts over sustained periods of time, uh, the EPA and CDC have determined can cause lung cancer. Number <laughs> number two uh, only to cigarette smoking. Wow! In lung cancer deaths annually. Second leading cause of lung cancer over smoking. Correct. That's crazy. Uh, something to, to point out, if, if people are considering systems and or buying homes with existing systems, mm-hmm. older systems, um, frequently fans were placed in the basement. That is a no-no. Uh, contractors who were not following um, protocol, because it's easier, would stick the fans in the basement. They can leak. 
That's oh, why wow. you don't know, think about that. You're creating, you know, suction. You're you're pulling all the radon out. You think everything's going great. Well, if you have a leaky, you know, attachment on your fan, ten years old, you're <laughs> pumping it right back into your into your house. Right. right. Fans have to be outside or above livable space uh, in the attic. Uh, of uh, mentioned, Rick mentioned about the fact that his friend's uh, radon levels were at thirteen. The acceptable radon level is four. Four. And are you, if you have above a four limit, are you required to put a mitigation system? Or is that just merely a recommendation? Uh, in the state of Massachusetts, it is a recommendation. Uh, radon is uh, regulated at the state level, not the federal level. So there is not a blanket policy. So there is a lot of difference, actually, state to state. Cost of a mitigation system? Sure. Uh, standard, you know, midpoint for a, a single family residential home, 1200 1250 uh, in that range. And the cost when you get cancer from not having a mitigation system? <laughs> right. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Boston with my dad, Rex Shearer, and Ali Alabi. Thanks, Samantha. Thank you so much. You, Man, you're going to take my job over someday, I think. <laughs> Good job, Samantha. The, the, the genesis of us, you and I, putting the show together has always been to be able to uh, bust myths. Right. And, uh, you know... Disastrous news sells. Yeah. And I think propaganda is now uh, essentially hanging their hat on the fact that, oh, are we dealing with another housing bubble? We're not dealing with another housing bubble. The definition of housing bubble is that you are speculating that the housing prices will continue to rise. And it's based on that speculation that you make investments in real estate. Well, if, if, if that expectation, uh, ultimately it will fail. Right. Uh, because housing prices can't sustain this 13, 14, 15, 18% uh, appreciation. No, but what they can ex- sustain is 3, 4, and 5%. Exactly. That's healthy growth. Exactly. So when you see a comparison of the 13.8 to 4.6, you realize, well, there I, really is no housing bubble. No, the take home message here is that, that you know, don't listen to the, to the media. There is no housing bubble, as best as we can tell, based on the data that's, that, that we review. And so if you're an individual that's, that's thinking about maybe upsizing or if if you're an individual that's thinking about you're currently renting and you want to purchase a property, I think the data supports that particular decision. And that is uh, you're going to leave money on the table over the course of the next three to five years. Uh, and you, you're going to you're going to essentially rob yourself out of out of building wealth over the course of the next five years. And why would you want to pay somebody else's mortgage where you can pay pay your own and take advantage of the low rates now? Yeah, because KCM came out with a pretty nice um, uh, slide as well, and it shows the next four years a slow appreciation of property, fifteen percent. Right, exactly. Well, you know, so and that's not fifteen percent in one year. That's a gradual, you know, fifteen percent over the next couple of years. So yeah, if, you know, I talk to clients all the time and go, well, I'm just going to save my money and I'm going to, I'm going to buy next September. Well, I mean, a few things we know that we know that the property is probably going to cost more next year. We also know that interest rates are on the climb. So it's kind of like two whammies against you. It's going to cost you more to buy the property and it's going to cost you more to finance the property. So you're, you know, yeah, you you might not be getting that three bedroom condo. 